Bring back it. Ah! What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is of course my video for the top 10 films that I used to hate but now love. This is a video I've been looking forward to do for quite some time, and truth be told, it's very difficult to do um, because there are a lot of films where I thought they were possibly either just okay or solid, and I ended up loving them, but very few do I go from the extreme of I hate it with a passion to then I actually love it. But these are the 10 movies I will be giving you that I actually felt that way. Um, and I also will be giving you guys a couple honorable mentions, and then keep in mind with this list, it'll be going from 10 to one, with obviously one being the most hated film that was also the most extreme, where I ended up going from that to then thinking it was a masterpiece. Um, so again, guys, I apologize for the exposition, but let's get started. So kicking things off the honorable mentions, I want to give a couple. We have Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I really didn't like this film the first time I saw it. Um, I just really didn't click with it, but at the same time, I now really appreciate it, and um, yeah, that's why I don't know 4K. Uh, next up, we have Alien Covenant. This was one of those films that I just really wasn't digging it um, in theaters, but at the same time, I just couldn't really get it out of my head, and I wanted to revisit it, and I did. And I liked it so much that I then bought it on 4K, and then I watched it again, and I've seen it now like three or four times. I really like this film quite a bit, and uh, yeah, that's why it's an honorable mention. And then, last but not least, um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. This, I actually have to give a shout out to my friend Ryan Arkavich because um, this is his favorite movie of all time. And when I became friends with him, he told me that. And I was like, yeah, I really didn't like that movie at all. Um, but, you know, the way he was talking about it and everything, I figured I'd give it a second chance, especially since I was doing a Terry Gilliam ranking video. So I rewatched it um, because I, I bought it on Criterion, which is a pretty big risk considering I hated the movie. But I decided to do it anyways. And um, here we go. I own it and uh, still really like it a second time. Second time, definitely... Definitely was beneficial. I'm glad that I did that. Um, it's a really good movie. So, all right. So those are the honorable mentions. Now let's kick things off with number 10. We have Spring Breakers. Uh, so this was a film that I greatly admired when I watched it the second, third, and fourth time. I, I really like this film quite a bit. Um, it's definitely not a film for everyone, but I think that in terms of a 2013 film dealing with excess, it does a really good job with it. Um, again, not a film that's for everyone, but Cliff Martins to score the... Florida drenched cinematography. Oh, really like it. It's a really good A24 film. And um, yeah, that's why it's my number 10. But again, I used to hate it. Um, so that was my number 10. Next up, my number nine is Gattaca. So you guys can look at my full thoughts on this film and in terms of my relationship with it um, in my review for Gattaca, which will be coming out soon. But Gattaca is a film that I watched in high school and I really didn't like it, but uh, I just, I couldn't really get out of my head the score. And so I rewatched it a couple times, and I felt like with each watch, I went from hating it to really, really, really liking it. And that's why it's my number nine. Next up, my number eight. Um, I think it's on here simply because, uh, you know, I grew up in a religious household, but my number eight is Noah. I hated this film. I'll never forget watching it. And while watching it, I was like looking up the Bible verses and everything. And I just really didn't like it. I was like, stop back to the Bible and everything. But, you know, I just. I couldn't get the score out of my head. I couldn't get the cinematography out of my head or the performances. And I rewatched it and I liked it a lot more. And I will say it definitely has benefited from multiple viewings. And I will add on top of that, that it actually does a pretty good job of interpreting the Bible. I think um, upon rewatches, I actually, you know, kind of changed my opinion, but I did hate it at first. And now I really, really love it. That's why I'm on Blu-ray. Next up, we have number seven, which is Avatar. So this is a film that I really, really hated with the passion first time I saw it. I hated all the Dex Machinas, the length. I was just, I was bored out of my mind. I watched it on DVD with my cousin um, shortly after it first came out on DVD. I think it was like March of 2010, but I really didn't like it. But I wanted to give it a second chance. I still didn't like it, but I think... Over the last five years, I decided to revisit it, and um, actually, I bought it on Blu-ray at the record store, and I'm glad that I did, because this is when it kind of clicked that I actually really dig this film. Don't love it by any means, but I really dig it, and I really do appreciate it for what it was going for. Um, again, not the best kind of like Dance with Wolves kind of story that would go to Last Samurai, but still a rock-solid, really good film. So yeah, that was my number seven. Next up, my number six is American History X. This film, I absolutely hated the cinematography when I saw it. I hated the cinematography. I hated the messages. I I, I missed the boat completely with this one. I thought it was pro-Nazi, uh, which obviously if you've seen the film, that's not the case at all. Um, so I, I clearly, clearly watched this movie just not, not with the right mature mindset. Um, but I wanted to give it a second chance uh, because 
I just couldn't get out of my head the performances, especially Edward Norton's. And I'm glad that that was the case because when I rewatched it, I was like, yeah, that's not pro-Nazi. That's not pro-Nazi in the slightest. Um, it's actually anti. So I really liked this film a second time. And then I watched it a third time. I showed my fiance and she really liked it as well. Um, it's just a film that seems to get better with each watch. And I, I really do like this film. That's, that's why it's my number six. Next up, my number five is Taxi Driver. Yeah, I actually hated this film the first time I saw it. I really did not like it. It, it. To me, it just, it made no sense why, you know, this character, Travis Pickle, would take a, a you know, a, a first date to a porn theater. It made no sense to me. But obviously, when I watched it many times after, it, it, it clicked as to the reason why. But the first time, no, I really hated it. I did not like the violence. I felt like the violence just was too, like, cartoonish. Um... But obviously, upon look up and everything, I understand why it looks the way it did. And, and now the violence doesn't even bother me with the way that it was towards the end. But I will say it's a film that each feeling I gained more and more, and I really like it now. Um, it went from like, a, I think it was like a two out of five, to now it's like a four and a half out of five. Really quite like this film. Definitely one of Scorsese's best, and um, that's why it's my number five. Next up, my number four is The Dark Knight. Yeah, that's right. I hated The Dark Knight. Um, so The Dark Knight, I went into with pretty high expectations. Um, I thought that it was going to be like a thrilling movie. But as a 14-year-old watching, it actually scared the bejesus out of me. No joke. Um, really, really frightened me. Because I just, I had never really seen a film like this before. I never saw a film like it where it was like, not a horror film, but like the main villain is like really, really creepy and really frightens me. Um, but that's just a little bit of backstory. Like, and because of that, I wasn't able to appreciate everything else. So I gave it like a one out of five, but I just couldn't get it out of my head. Um, and I think that's probably when I knew that I do like villains in films, especially like, especially the ones that, you know, have a lot of interesting depth and well acted, but rewatched it multiple times and now it's it's my favorite superhero film and i obviously own it on 4k and i love it but yeah i i believe it or not as a teenager did not like this film uh which you would not think but it was funny because i've seen this movie now like two dozen times but again that first feeling i'll never forget i was scared out of my wits and, and i watched it at my cousins too because i wasn't allowed to watch the dark knight at my house um but memories man so yeah that was my number four next up my number three is crouching tiger hidden dragon so this was a film that I didn't even finish. I watched it with my parents and none of us were vibing with it. Really did not like the action choreography. Um, I, it just, I was like, why are they like flying in the air? Like what the heck, What what is this? Um, so we shut it off like 30 minutes and I gave it like a half a star out of five. But I gotta say, thank God for Ang Lee because I was ranking his films and I had Crouching Tiger as his last film like that I liked. So I was like, this movie is pretty highly acclaimed. Let me rewatch it. I rewatched it, and uh, shortly after, I picked up my 4K, and I've seen it. Um, I think one, uh, one or two, one or two other times after I, I originally saw it um, with a fresh set of eyes. And I love this film. Now it's a masterpiece in my eyes. I think it's a great film. But yeah, that first film, I just I really wasn't able to appreciate this film. Now I love it, man. I love it. So yeah, that's my number three. Next up, my number two. The film that got me into film criticism and it actually is what started me actually rating films. And that's my number two, Hannah. So this film, I gave a half a star out of five. I hated every single aspect about it. Did not like the villains. I was like, why are these villains running all funny? Why does the score sound the way it does? Um, you know, why does a lot of this take place in like Grimm's brother kind of settings? Like, I don't understand, like what, it, what is going on here? Why are these action scenes filmed the way that they are? I just, I, I really didn't like it. I felt that it was way too weird, way too out there. Um, and it just inspired me to start doing ratings. And I said to myself after like a couple of years, I was like, you know, what, let me revisit this film, see if I still hate it. And, uh, I didn't hate it. I actually really liked it. And I watched it then a couple more other times, bought it on Blu-ray. And now I, I, now I love the film, but it's just kind of an interesting history with this film that it's like, I went from hating it and it inspiring me to start doing movie ratings to now, like I actually genuinely love it. And I think that it's probably Joe Wright's best film, this or Atonement. Um, but I, I, I love Hannah and that's why it is my number two. Number two. Next up, my number one, the film that, let's face it, is the one that I had the most radical transformation from going from absolutely hating it to loving it is my number one, The Tree of Life. So yeah, this is a film that I didn't watch with my parents. I actually just watched it with my mom. And we both, 15 minutes in, were like, yeah, we should shut this off because we both hated it. But it was one of those films that I just couldn't stop thinking about um, years later. So I decided to revisit it and I got it out from the library and I actually really quite 
liked it. Didn't love it or anything, but I was like, yeah, you know, I should have finished it when I first saw it. But then I still couldn't get it out of my head, and I kept revisiting it, revisiting it. And then um, I was always liking it, like, thought that it was good. But then I heard about this Criterion release, and uh, one of my friends actually got it, and he told me that, look, like, the extended cut, like, that is the definitive version. Um, so I was like, you know what, screw it, I'll buy it on Criterion. So I did, and I watched the extended cut, and um, now I look at it as a masterpiece. I think it's a fantastic film, one of my all-time favorites. But lo and behold, when I first saw it, I... Hated it so much I didn't even finish it, uh, which is unheard of to be honest. Because I, I, I would not do that now. The the film buff that I am today, I, I would not do that. Um, but yeah, this is number one, guys. So yeah, um, that is the top ten films that I used to hate and now love. Let me know your ranking, guys. Like films that you thought that you absolutely hated and then went back to it and actually loved it down the line. Let me know yours in the comment section below. And as always, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate the support. Don't forget the subscription, the notification bell, follow me on Letterboxd, and I will catch you guys later.